lot of my favorite things on the bench here. Got Karen from Asian Inspirations, and she's going to be cooking one of my favorite things. Hi, Elena. It's a pleasure <laughs> to be here. So we're going to make nasi goreng, which translates to fried rice. So uh, we've got the nasi here, which is rice, and we're going to goreng it, which is fry, but adding a couple of other ingredients and seasonings to make it quite yummy. Absolutely. This is actually one of the things that my Oma most requested in her final days. Um, mm. Yeah, she was born just outside of Jakarta in yeah. Yogyakarta. Yeah. So this is something that has been uh, familiar in my household oh, for a wonderful. long time. Wonderful. <laughs> so we're going to actually start up with the base paste mm -hmm. for a nasi goreng which is an ingredient which I think a lot of our viewers might not have used before, which is belacan. Yum! <laughs> Look at the it's enthusiasm. Stinky, it's funky, but it is so good. So good, so good. So we're going to crush it. If you give me that. Yes. And in it goes, about 20 grams. Or if you don't remember, when you buy a block, it's about half a centimetre thick. And so I'm going to do that. If I can get you to help me spoon up about a tablespoon of sambal olet. Another one of my favourite ingredients. I've always got some in the freezer. It's a Just really in good case. condiment, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Just in case. Into here? Into here. It's a really good dip as well. Absolutely. It's, um, it's very versatile. Always have some Thank at home. Thank you. Alrighty. So while that's being ground up to a paste, maybe slice up some cabbage? Absolutely. Please. Thank you. So I can smell this belacan already. And if you've never used belacan before, I highly recommend you give it a go. Let your taste buds travel. Absolutely. It's sort of... Uh, even funkier, deeper, richer version of an anchovy, which is more usually associated with Mediterranean cooking. Mm -hmm. So it sort of has got all of that naturally occurring umami. Mm -hmm. So it's just this really deep, rich, savoury notes. It starts so many <laughs> incredible dishes. <laughs> That's right. And it's very popular in, in Southeast Asian cooking. Um, while you're slicing that, I'm just cutting off the white bits of the um, spring onions. I'll and slice those for oh. later or do you... Okay, well, I was going to help you. Yeah, yeah. Can do <laughs> I'll together. do the garnish part. All right, so I'm going to heat up a pan nice and hot and put it in that, that paste that we've ground up before. Um, so let's just get chopping. So I'm just going to um, loosen this paste up. I'll just grab that tablespoon from you. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, you can see here it's just blended nicely with the sambal ole. Sambal ole is a very popular. One of the main condiments, actually, in Indonesian cooking. Absolutely. Okay, I'm just going to put in some, drizzle some um, oil to oil. get started. Thank you. I'll give that to you. So this is going to sizzle quite nicely. Not much, maybe a tablespoon or a bit of a tablespoon. And then in this goes. Okay. And it's about to get funky, funky. in this kitchen. But I, you know what? I, I think the funky is not the right description. If I, <laughs> I mean, how, how would you, how would you introduce blachan or prawn paste to? A friend who's never had this before. <laughs> I would definitely get them to try it as a whole dish first. Yes. Because it is intense, it is concentrated, mm -hmm. it is all of those sort of... In <laughs> Funky flavours. Absolutely. So if you're eating the final product and you go, ah, oh, okay, and then take it a step back and take it a step back, yep. you'll learn to love it before you realize and separate it from one another and if you ever you know have a question about would you use blachan as an ingredient or prawn paste mm -hmm. uh, log on to our website oh fantastic asian inspirations so we can write in questions to you about various ingredients that's we can. great and there are recipes online there are um, um, ingredients for you to explore and taste fantastic um, we're using chicken thigh so you can't really overcook chicken thigh i feel so it's really forgiving. We're going to put this aside and throw in the prawns and let it cook just for a couple of minutes until it's spinning through. So I put in the prawns to cook and then I'm going to add in the um, spring onions. Oh, my spring onions are here. These ones? Uh, yeah, just the white bits and let it cook a little bit in the, in the, in the heat. And I'm going to throw in the cabbage. Mm -hmm. And my Oma would actually, um, she also mentioned that you could use the white parts of leeks oh, instead of spring onions. Of so I guess depending on That's a really good idea. where you <laughs> grew up. That's a really good idea. Okay, I'm going to put this, because this is now cooked, I'm going to let it sit on the cabbage because the cabbage has to just cook down a little. And wilt just slightly? Yes, okay. before, we put on the, before we put on the rice. 
Okay. If you could only smell this at home. A smell of vision I think you would already <laughs> be converted to Bellatron. Actually, over here, onto piping hot rice, that's a dish in itself. Oh. <laughs> but we're going to throw in the rice now, because yep. the cabbage wilted, wilted quite nicely. And we'll throw, it, throw in. So this is four cups of cooked rice. And any happy. rice in particular work well for um, nazi goreng? I think best if it's long grain mm -hmm. or um, medium grain, not short grain or what we call sushi rice or mm -hmm. arborio rice because I think that's too starchy. Too starchy, fantastic. Yeah. So and is, is it good to use fresh rice or when? how would you well, prepare your rice ahead of time? See, that's the, that's the debate. I use overnight rice, but there's a lot, of debate. There's a lot of debate about, <laughs> you know, overnight rice and, you know, how we shouldn't eat overnight rice, but, you know, I've got iron stomachs. Okay, I'm going to throw in the seasoning now. So the seasoning is really very simple because the main seasoning is in there with the blachan mm -hmm. and the sambal oleg. And we're going to throw in some ketchup manis mm -hmm. and some soy sauce, please. Ketchup manis is another staple in the Indonesian recipes. It provides that treacle, that sweet flavour mm. that you're looking for. Just a couple of tablespoons. And whereas my dad would often serve everything with a side of tomato sauce. Oh yes. I pretty much always had ketchup, ketchup manis. How oh, interesting. <laughs> We're getting the funkiness from the chilli. I'm going to stop talking now. Because <laughs> I'm going to sneeze soon. So if you're leaning over this, just beware that some of those aromas have got a little bit of power, <coughs> a little bit of fire. So just be mindful. So while this rice is cooking, and you can see that the sauces have provided a kind of a coating, mm. makes it a little bit moist, almost like a dry version of a risotto. Uh -huh. Almost. Yeah. I'm just going to fry an egg, just a regular egg. So what we'll do is let's plate up. Excellent. Okay. So we just have one single serve for the two of us. Generous, please. <laughs> So we can we can serve it as a one serve or a mm -hmm. family serve or a couple serve, uh, <laughs> and then we're just going to top it with the egg and some garnish. Um, I've got some chili sauce here, which is um, going to Very be so challenging. worth it. <laughs> All right, so our eggs cooked nicely. Um, is it how you like it? Oh, that looks good to me. No, but you cook it your way. Mm. It's not all about me. I am cooking for you. <laughs> there you go. How gorgeous is that? And then let's sprinkle a little bit of uh, spring onions on and crispy French shallots. Crispy French shallots. And then this is this is really good for any garnish on any dish, any cuisine that you have. Okay, so we've got the spicy, we've got the sweet, and we've got the salty. Now we need a little bit of acidity. acidity. Nearly forgot for you there. Wonderful. Up to the individual, how much they like. We love it. Karen, thank you so much for being here and oh. showing me just another way to access this beautiful dish that is definitely comfort food in my oh, home. Yeah. <laughs> Take me back to my oma. <laughs> and we can find this recipe on the My Market Kitchen website and on the Asian Inspirations website. Enjoy. Enjoy.